Hello, today I'm going to show you how to create a 3D logo animation with any logo using a MacBook Pro, Cinema 4D, Octane and R&DR in just 15 minutes while sat in a coffee shop. So that's import, extrude, light, animate, shade, export, render, download and deliver all within 15 minutes whilst enjoying a nice flat white. You don't have to be a 3D expert, this is all aimed at beginners, so if you've never done this before, you can follow this video step by step to create a custom 3D logo animation that you can post to TikTok, Instagram or Mint as an NFT. The world is your oyster. As a bonus tip at the end, I'll show you how you can continue playing with your logo on an iPad for unlimited possibilities. So before you start, you need a couple of things. You need any Apple Silicon device, I'm using a MacBook Pro M1 Max. You need Cinema 4D, you can get a trial for 14 days, and you need the Octane plugin for Cinema 4D and Octane Standalone, which you can get for free by following the links in the description below. For files and other bits that you need, you need your logo as an Illustrator file, your brand color as a hex code for our background, and a free HDRI image that you can download from Polyhaven. The link is also in the description. I tried to pack as much information here as possible, so please pause the video if I'm going too fast or if you get stuck. So subscribe, grab a coffee, and I'm gonna start the timer now and let's go. Open Cinema 4D. If you've installed everything correctly, Octane should show up in the top right next to window. If you haven't, just watch my tutorial videos before. Now to start, we need to go to our finder window, find our logo and drag and drop that into this gray box here. A dialog box will show up, but don't worry about that, just press okay. We now have our logo in Cinema 4D, nice. Next, we wanna add some depth. So click on your logo, go down and click on extrude depth and put in one centimeter. Our logo is now a bit thicker and we'll make it really nice when we spin it around. We then wanna add a bevel, so click on caps and then just here, you wanna add a size of 0.025. This will help add some realism because nothing's perfect and will help catch the light when we spin it around. Holding shift, use the trackpad to orbit around your model until we're facing straight on. We're then gonna change some render settings. So let's go up to the top where it says edit render settings and in width, we're gonna put in 1080 and in height, we're gonna put in 1920. Whilst we're here, we also wanna make sure that our frame rate down at the bottom is also at 30. Close out of the render settings and down at the bottom, you'll see something that says 90. This is 90 frames and we wanna change this to 300. So we now have 300 frames for our animation. Now for the fun stuff. Go up to the top right where it says Octane and click on Live Viewer Window. Use the three lines to drag and dock it on the left-hand side of our panel. Now we can click on our Octane logo to fire up the renderer. We're now using Octane. But before we get too excited, we need to change some settings. So click on this settings icon here. So when the box pops up, we need to change direct lighting to path tracing. And then our max samples to a thousand. Our diffuse depth to eight, our specular depth to eight, and our GI clamp down at the bottom to one. You don't need to know what all these mean yet. All you need to do is just make sure that all your settings look like mine. So close this. And then in the objects, we want to add a HDRI environment. Go over to the Objects panel, click on our Octane Sky, and click on this blue icon. Down at the bottom, you'll see something that says Image Texture, which you want to click. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see a folder, and here is where you want to add the HDRI image. I downloaded mine for free from Polyhaven, but the link's in the comments below. If you click on the Octane logo again in the top left, you should now see your lights in the picture viewer. We're now going to repeat this step, but instead of adding a HDRI, we're going to add a texture environment. So click on that, and then click on the blue icon again, and down at the bottom, you'll see something that says Primary Environment. We want to change that to Visible Environment. And then you want to click where it says RGB Spectrum, and this is how we're going to set the color of our background. Now, if you don't like how this looks, I like to click on this little arrow here, and then I like to go over to the hash. And here is when you can actually put in your hex code. So if you have hex code for your background, which I do, that should automatically populate and you now have your brand background color. Awesome, so we're getting there. Now we need to add a camera, so go up to objects and add an Octane camera. Back over in our objects window, we wanna make sure that when we click on Octane camera, we've got this little square icon clicked in with a little dot in the middle. Now we need to go over to coordinates and we need to zero all of these things out. So you wanna zero out this H, you wanna zero out this P, and you wanna zero out the Y, and you wanna zero out the X. The Z, the PZ one, is the one that's actually going to control the zoom. So set this to what you want, but I like to set this to about minus 20. Now you'll notice what we're seeing on the right hand side isn't what we're seeing on the left. So if you click this lock icon and then start zooming out using this little tab here, this will show us our full render view. Now it's time to rotate our logo. Let's uncheck that square on the Octane camera. Add a null object, which is really easy. You can just use this top left hand icon. Go down to the null's coordinates and type in 0.5, which is half of our depth. So now when we look at the position of our null, it's slap bang in the center of our logo. 
back over in our objects window, check that square back on to the dot should be in the center, and then drag and drop the Octane camera on top of the null, so it should look like this. With the null selected, make sure that your timeline is set to zero down at the bottom, go into the coordinates and click on the diamond icon next to RH. When it turns red, that means you've set a keyframe. At the bottom, drag your timeline all the way to the other side, and in RH you want to type in 360, and then set another keyframe by pressing that diamond icon. It should turn red, and that means that both of your keyframes are set, and if I just play through the animation here, you should see that we have a nice, slowly rotating logo with a lovely red backdrop. This gives us a really flexible setup, so you could come and drag in any other logo and it should animate the exact same way, which is how I did all of the ones at the beginning of this video. The last thing to do is to add a material. In the Octane window, go to Materials, click on Create, and click Octane Glossy Material. Now, you'll see, where is the material gone? It's not here, but that's because it's hidden and you have to click on this icon at the top, and that brings your material browser. Drag and drop this onto our logo. Double click on that logo in the material browser again, just so we can bring it up on the bottom and then close the material browser. From here, we're then able to change the color of our logo. So I can set it to black if I want to, but I just want to keep this as a white logo. So I'm going to set this to 0.9. The very last thing we'll do is add a vignette. So go to your Octane camera, click on the camera imager. If you scroll down, you'll see the vignette slider here and I'm going to set mine to 0.4. Now that we're done, I'm going to go back to my Octane settings and I'm going to set this to 2000. So you'll see at the bottom, it says it takes around 30 seconds of frame. Times that by 300, that means around 150 minutes to get this animation done. So how are we going to render this in such a short amount of time? Well, that's where render comes in. We need to package up all of our work into an easy file that we can upload. And luckily, Octane has just the thing. If we go into File and Export, you'll see Package and Animated Package. We want Animated Package. This will open up a dialog window, and what we'll be saving is an Orbex file, which is the file that we'll be uploading to R&DR. And when you click Save, we'll be going through each one of our frames in our animation, restoring all the HDRIs, our camera movement, and our logo model down into one easy-to-use file. Once it finishes rendering, it will automatically open Octane Standalone, which is where we're going to be checking our file. All we need to do is click down where it says Render Target, click on that, and it will automatically open our file. The only reason we're doing this is just to check that the file has saved everything that we need, so we know that we've got our background, we've got our lights, we've got our model in there, and it all looks okay. And if you just click on this slider and move it about, you can see all of the animation data is stored in here too. Next, we want to go to Google and type in R&DR, and click on the first link that you see and click on the Artist Portal in the top right-hand side. As you've likely never used this service before, you just have to sign up. But since I have, I'm greeted with my Jobs page, but I actually want to click on here and go to my Scenes. Before we go any further, we need to make sure we have some money in our account. How many credits you need depends on lots of factors, but to show you an example, this one at 2,000 samples at Priority costs 3.17 credits, and this one at 1,000 samples at Economy costs 0 0.43 credits. If you time crunch like me, around 4 credits should do, which is still cheaper than the flat white I've just purchased. But if you have time to wait, just buy one credit, which should be more than enough. And so once you've got your render credits, all we have to do is drag and drop the Orbex file and it will automatically start uploading. Once uploaded, it would also start processing. All we have to do is click on this big orange button that says Create New Job. And here we'll see a breakdown of our project. We will see our resolution and how many frames that we're going to render. Click Continue Output Selection and add a PNG output. Don't need to worry about any of these other scenes. This is just the naming conventions it's going to use and click Continue to Network Settings. Now here is where you get to choose how fast you want to use the render network. You can select Priority or Economy. Because I'm time crunched, I want to select Priority. Go down to the bottom and click Continue to Cost Estimate. Now in order to actually create a job, we actually need to give Render an estimate. Here I'm going to put my time per frame, which is 30 seconds. And my Octane Bench Score is 100. Don't worry about this estimate because it's actually going to use the correct amount of R&DR credits that you need. Once you click Create New Job, then you'll see Render get to work, and it's sending all of our frames to the distributed GPU rendering network. This allows us to render all of our frames at the exact same time. Once done, we then need to review all of our frames. So while you click on that button, it will then allow you to go down and look at every single frame that's been sent to the render network. I'm going to select all of my frames, which will automatically select them all below, and then click Accept Selection. Once done, we're then able to download all of our outputs. So click on Download Outputs, and here you'll see a breakdown of your project. Here you'll see it took 4 minutes to render 300 frames, and it cost 3.17 render credits. So at the bottom of the page, click Downloads, and here we want to select Download All. However, it's going to download to our downloads from Chrome. So first, if you just go up to your settings in Chrome, 
on the left-hand side, go down to Downloads and change this file directory to a new folder. So I'm going to call this Logo Animation and create a new folder and press Select here. Once I've done that, I'm going to double check it's actually the right file directory, go back to my downloads, click Download All and then Begin Downloads. And here you'll see all of our 300 frames that we've rendered on the render network being downloaded into this folder. The last thing we have to do is to stitch all of these individual frames together into one video. And so to do that, once it's downloaded, go to your launch pad and type in at the top QuickTime Player. Once QuickTime Player is open, go to File and click Open Image Sequence. Go to the folder with all of our frames in there and press Command A to select all of them and click Choose Media. From there, it's then going to prompt us to say which frame rate do we want, and we want 30 frames per second because that's what we created in Cinema 4D and it will prepare the video so we can now watch our logo animation. And here's our beautiful 10 second clip of our logo spinning. Now, aren't we proud of our beautiful, beautiful creation? However, in order to save this, we now need to go up to File in the QuickTime Player menu here and click Export As, and you're gonna select 1080p. And here you just wanna select a, your new logo animation and it will automatically export that out. And from here, I'm just gonna drag and drop this over into AirDrop and I'm gonna drop it onto my phone and if I just load up my phone, click into my photos, there you go. I now have my logo animation on my phone. If I just scroll across, I can share it to Instagram, to Facebook, to Discord, Messenger, anywhere. And with eight seconds to go, I think it's fair to say that we've successfully completed this challenge, creating a logo animation in under 15 minutes. But we're not done there, because now with this Orbex file, if I have an M1 or M2 iPad, which I do, I could drag and drop this over to my iPad, and with the Octane X installed, what I can then do is open this file in Octane X. And in here, we can have lots more fun with our logo. So this is literally Octane running on the iPad. And we can easily change our exposure or our vignette if we wanted to. I can also go down and change the resolution. So say I wanted to make this more of a banner for my Facebook or Twitter feed. I could just scale it down like this. I can go up to camera and I can also change the field of view just to recenter it. It's truly incredible what you can do on an iPad now. And I'm only just scratching the surface of what you can do with this. And if I go up to the top left and click on advanced mode, and click on this little icon on the left and then click on my logo, I can scroll down and find the color and change the color of my logo here. And from here, all I have to do is find a nice frame that I like. I could drop my samples because I don't need 2000 samples, 400 or so would do. Go up to the top and click save image. And now what all I have to do is set this as my lovely background wallpaper for my iPad. And I'm just gonna frame it up a little bit here. But yes, this is everything that you can do with an Orbex file using RNDR and the power of a distributed GPU network. And that's it. And I really hope you enjoyed this video because I had an absolute blast making it. So if you do make your 3D logo, please tag me in this on Twitter or on Instagram. Just, I really want to see what you guys make. You might have also noticed that I've been doing a podcast series called Interview with a Pro, where I sit down with some of the best 3D artists in the industry and ask them all about their process. So if you enjoy that stuff too, just take a look here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.